Funding for Lucky Chow has been provided by... For me, food is all about pleasure, whether I'm growing it, cooking it, or eating it. But in this episode, I'm looking at food in a different, more practical, and more traditionally Asian way, how it affects wellness. So for health purposes, is there a benefit of eating, you know, radish versus the cabbage? In America, when it comes to our health, we're more focused on curing things than preventing them. Asian cultures see health in a more holistic way that emphasizes the crucial role of diet in maintaining the body's harmony. So I want to find out how different Asian cultures eat to be well. Traditional Chinese medicine has been around longer than the United States, 10 times longer. These all-natural practices date back 2,500 years. They're the epitome of time-tested. While Western medicine focuses on fixing what's wrong, TCM focuses on overall health and well-being. Some aspects of it, like acupuncture and cupping, are familiar in the West. But I'm meeting up with my friend and tour guide, Hana, to learn more about the dietary side of this ancient field at the Traditional Chinese Medicine Museum in Hangzhou, China. We are in Huqing Yutang, and this medicine store was built in 1874, 143 years ago. And the medicine store has been like this for 143 years. The houses behind used to be the workshops, and today it's a museum. Chinese medicine is based on three theories. Uh -huh. The first one is yin and yang. They are the opposite part of everything. Only when yin and yang is well balanced, people are healthy. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the channels. There are 14 main channels inside our body. And these channels are the way for the blood and the qi to go through. Uh -huh. So they must be going smoothly. Uh, otherwise, people feel pain, painful and sick. Mm -hmm. And the third one is the five elements. Mm -hmm. The world consists of five elements and our body five organs, like five mm. elements. What are some of the plants and the properties uh, of Chinese medicine? The very um, popular ones like a date, a goji uh -huh. berry, we eat them in our everyday life and mm -hmm. meanwhile they are medicine. So are you supposed to eat Chinese medicine every day? No, it does not mean we eat Chinese medicine every day. Uh -huh. It means the food we are eating every day can adjust in and yang of our body. How do we take the medicine? Uh, first, when we get the herbs, we have to boil oh, them uh -huh. and we drink the bitter tea. Hmm. Yes. The nickname of the Chinese medicine uh, from the young generation is the bitter coke. And the Chinese saying is liang yao ku kou, good medicine, bitter taste. Can you have the medicine in a pill form? Pill, it's for everyone. The herbs is uh, according to you situation the doctor diagnoses you so it's personal so this works better than the pills and the capsules mm. thank you so much i have big bags of herbs to bring home now so many of us lead non-stop and busy lives for me in new york the nights end late and the mornings start early i could use more sleep and my stress levels definitely higher than it should be I wanted to see what a TCM doctor would prescribe me to help me feel better, more energetic, and less stressed. Well, so I just came back from seeing the doctor and she gave me 30 different herbs, 30 plus different herbs, all to treat what she calls 
my overthinking. So I'm taking herbs like goji berries, mulberry, ginkgo nuts, all to help my liver restore itself during the block of time between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. While TCM is ubiquitous in China, with about 90% of the population practicing it, it's also available anywhere in the world where Chinese people have settled. I'm going on a little TCM shopping trip with Sophia Tso of Po Wing Hong Market, right here in New York City's Chinatown. So Sophia, <laughs> tell us about your shop. Our shop has been in Chinatown for almost 40 years. My parents began the shop in a very small location on Hester Street. This is our third location. We've been here for 20 years almost in just this spot. We try to provide really good customer service by providing information. We also specialize in higher quality products. We have a really big team just to select the best products that we can get. That's great. You're really taking this traditional herbal grocery store into the next generation. You see that this whole trend of functional foods really becoming popular amongst people of our generation in the West. Yeah, food and medicine in general is just so synonymous with health. Chinese people, we live that lifestyle, so I don't think it becomes like too like apparent to us that we're actually practicing the TCM philosophy. It's just our way of life. Can you show me some of your must-have products for just overall wellness? Yeah, absolutely. We can get started. Yeah. What are the prescriptions I have includes goji berries? Well, it really helps invigorate the qi. And I think what's so popular about uh, goji berries in general is that they're so sweet and so delicious to eat. So it does, you don't really feel like you're taking medicine. And these are gorgeous chrysanthemums. These bloom in tea? Yes. Or how these, are you supposed to use these? Very simple, just put it into boiling water, add a little bit of um, honey or some rock sugar, and that's just how you take it. And it's very calming. It's like a chamomile? Yes, like a chamomile. But I like this one better because I feel like it's a little bit uh, more flavorful than a chamomile. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So in the case of these cordyceps, what exactly are the properties? It's a basically a um, turbo booster <laughs> to wow. our immunity. There's no particular industry to cultivate these. Right. You really do need to head into the mountains of Tibet or to northern China and to um, find one little straw. This is my mom, <laughs> Nancy. Oh, <hello>. <laughs> So my mom, has, she's the founder of this business along with my dad. Oh. <laughs> if you come here um, basically every day of the week, you'll see my mom behind the counter. So. I was going to ask you, you know, how people learn about these various ingredients and it needs to be so personalized, but I guess your mom is a wonderful resource. <laughs> my mom has many, many years of experience, but we also have uh, herbalists. We have um, people who have been working in pharmaceuticals in China, but when they immigrated here to the U.S., um, there's not a big field <laughs> in TCM, and so they come and they help us with uh, quality control and to help prescribe things to our customers. Can you show us some of the different types of ginseng? Sure, let's take a walk over. Ginseng is very good for energy. Taking a little bit of ginseng just like awakens your senses. Really? Right. This uh, red ginseng, it has a different scent to it, more sweet sweetness to it. I think that comes out when um, during the steaming process. Oh, yeah, it smells yeah. almost like a date or yes. a, a lot of woodsiness. Yeah. I mean, I yes. guess that's why it makes the soups really palatable. Right, right. Not and bitter at all. Not bitter at all. Jingsen is not something that you would consume every day because it is so, such a powerful herb. For busy people like you and I, um, I would just recommend taking it in slice form. You just uh -huh. add it into water and make it into a simple tea. So what are some basic ingredients that you need to make an overall wellness soup? The basics that you need in every Chinese cook's kitchen would be a red date. Uh -huh. So these are so versatile. One, it adds such great sweetness to any soups or anything that you're making. It really helps to invigorate blood flow. It really boosts the qi. So this is something that's very, very common. So this is, um, it's a dried yam. It's a long root uh -huh. that's sliced and then dried. What Huai San does is it helps you to absorb all the nutrients that uh, you're eating. Okay. Yeah. 
If you want to add a, a nice flavor, um, uh -huh. mushrooms are perfect. Mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms are perfect for that. A general uh, rule of thumb is just everything in about equal proportions. I mean, dosage is quite important. Find a recipe and follow it to the T. And a no need for meat or vegetables or any other. Thing. Not necessary. Okay. So you ready to check out? Yes, yes. Okay, let's go. TCM should not be seen as a, a substitute for food. TCM or medicine is just basically, like you said, a supplement to, um, to your diet. And it's a way to restore your energy back. When you feel a little bit unbalanced in your, um, your body will tell you and just come in and we'll help you out, <laughs> prescribe something to you. Thank you, Sophia. Hopefully okay. I'll come back glowing like you. <laughs> I wanted to be a good patient, so I brought home all the herbs that were prescribed for me and made some healthy concoctions in my own kitchen. Eventually, these soups and teas should help me feel more balanced and energized. TCM isn't an exact science, but maybe as a society, we're too eager to take medicine as a quick fix when we could slow down and use our diet as a way to avoid getting sick in the first place. Perhaps the hottest of all the wellness trends is probiotics. Americans have recently taken to foods and supplements containing these living microorganisms, but in Korea, they've been a part of everyday life for centuries. Every Korean family has its own kimchi recipe, and often a separate kimchi refrigerator to house their probiotic-rich pickled vegetables. Kimchi is so important to Koreans and Korean culture that there's even a museum in Seoul dedicated to this national treasure. Before I explore the history of this delicious dish, I'm going to put on some traditional Korean garb to set the mood. 한국인들은 일반적으로 김치를 먹는 것뿐만 아니라 다양하게 해석할 수 있는 부분을 이제 보여주는 전시고요. 김치 앤 칩스라는 작가의 작품입니다. 이 전시는 이제 일반적으로 일반적으로 한국에선 김치 할때 이제 사진 찍을 때그 모습을 한번 직접 참여해 보시면서 경험해 보면 좋을 것 같습니다. 김치. 김치가 이제 세계 5대 건강 식품이기도 합니다. 그래서 그런 건강함을 함께 설명해 주는 공간이고요. 그래서 김치 유산균과 과학적인 내용을 함께 보실 수가 있습니다. I defeat bad germs in your intestines and make your body healthier. says Mr. Kimchi. Is there such a thing as a kimchi day? 어, 김장을 담그는 시즌이 있어요. 그래서 김치를 만드는 그 김장철을 저희가 이제 한국 사람들은 대부분 되게 큰 대규모 행사라고 하고요. 김치를 함께 만들어 보는 것들은 혼자가 아니라 여럿이 같이 하는 거잖아요. I love how the making of kimchi is done together and then it's shared together as you said. And I couldn't leave the kimchi museum without a cooking lesson from an expert. What makes kimchi so healthy? 어, 김치가 건강식품인 이유는 여기 보시는 재료같이 신선한 채소 재료로 담그고요. 그리고 정성스러운 또 양념이 있습니다. 그리고 이 김치는 각가지 채소와 양념이 섞어서 발효 과정을 거치는데요. 그 김치에는 이제 락토바실러스라고 하는 유산균이 있는데요. 그 유산균은 우리 몸에 소화가 잘 되는 이제 정장 작용을 해줍니다. 그리고 또 김치 안에는 여기 있는 이 캡사이신 성분이 비만을 억제하고 마늘과 생강 성분이 암을 예방 예방하는 효과를 가지고 있습니다. Is it true that every family has a secret recipe? 모두 이제 집마다 가지, 레시피를 가지고 있고요. 그리고 김치는 이제 한국의 엄마의 수만큼 그 맛이 다양하다고 할 정도로 네, 맛이 많이 있습니다. So for health purposes, is there a benefit of eating, you know, radish versus the cabbage? 배추는 비타민 C가 있고요. 그리고 비타민 C가 가득하고요. 이거 무 같은 경우는 우리 소화 기관에 이제 좋은 채소이기 때문에 무 드시면 좋습니다. 네, 한번 시식해 보실까요? That's mm. it's really good. It tastes like it's already aged. I read that the average Korean eats 40 pounds of cabbage a year. Oh, 저는 매일 먹고요. Every day. <laughs> 매일 매 끼마다 많이 먹고 있습니다. Well, thank you for sharing your secret recipe with me. <laughs> 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 
김치 스토어룸. 왼쪽에 보시면 코리아 김치고요. 이쪽은 월드 피클드 베지터블이라고 해서 다양한 세계의 김치를 한번 보실 수가 있습니다. So what is the comparison between Korean kimchi and then Western pickles? 일반적으로 이제 발효를 얘기를 했을 때 김치가 조금 더 이제 유산균에 발효된다라는 것들을 이제 비교하실 수가 있고요. 이쪽에는 이제 식초나 간장류로 이제 그냥 절인 것들로만 이제 전시를 해놨기 때문에 그 절임의 기반으로 했을 때는 같이 비교해 보실 수가 있습니다. It looks like there's no vegetable a Korean mom can't pickle. But fermenting your own produce isn't the only way to make something delicious that also has wellness benefits. At his pharmacy and wellness bar on Manhattan's Lower East Side, Stanley George draws on his South Asian heritage as well as a sensitive nose and palate. Why did you decide to call this place, which sells tonics and wellness drinks, also medicine, a pharmacy, rather than say like a wellness center. Pharmacists uh, were the original tonic makers. They would take these uh, fresh ingredients and mix up these uh, kind of natural medicines. Yeah, so it sounds like you're a real proponent of incorporating Eastern and Western practices. The spectrum that I uh, practice blends uh, the Ayurvedic traditions with the Chinese, and even European homeopathy. I really enjoy bringing that aspect into my pharmacy practice. Your motto is... Drinks and drugs. <laughs> well, tell me about the drink part. It's what I do, you know. Uh, I'm a pharmacist and I make drinks. Um, but we take all these amazing herbs that we procure, we turn them into teas, we mix them up. They're all custom-based drinks for how you feel. And it's a combination of blending different teas and juices and ferments, extracts that we make, uh, all to create these unique tastes and flavors that actually have an effect for whatever might ail you or refresh you. Tell me how you feel, I'll make you a drink. Okay, so I feel tired, um, stressed, but I need energy. All right, <laughs> all right, let's do it. Okay. You know, when you go see a traditional Chinese doctor, they'll give you these individually prescribed bags of herbs that you brew into teas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you do the similar thing for patients here? Absolutely, and I'm gonna do that for okay. you right now. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a Stanley's Pharmacy proprietary detox. Mm. Take a whiff of that. Lemon myrtle, mm -hmm, rose myrtle. hips. Mm -hmm. it smells amazing. Mm. It's, a, it's a great kidney flush. I'm gonna give you a little bit of this. This is Shizandra. It's excellent for your liver and Shizandra, your kidney. Shizandra, what is that? Shizandra berries. Mm -hmm. It's actually an adaptogen of Chinese medicine. A little bit of lavender. Uh huh. You know this, right? Yes. Here. I wanted to do something. I don't you. usually have Show it in my hand. tea, though. <gasps> Isn't that smell? Amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna make me fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something called rhodiola, uh -huh. and it's also uh, an, considered an adaptogen in traditional Chinese medicine, uh -huh. and uh, it's considered really good for your adrenal glands and helps to uh -huh. regulate adrenal secretion and make your energy levels more stable. Huh. This is what's gonna change your life. This is the husk of a plant, tago seed, and it's used in Ayurveda. Uh, we take it in and it'll literally just expand and scrub the inside of your digestive tract. Mm. It's gonna feel great. What's old is new again. And you're taking traditional medicine practices, mm -hmm. but you're modernizing it and reintroducing it to new audiences. And that's so cool. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love it. it. Tastes really different than any juice I'm used to. It'll just go in and help 
flush everything out. Mm -hmm. mm. It's really tart and super spicy. Mm -hmm. I guess it's from the ginger, but mm -hmm. I also love the texture of it because I suppose it's what you were talking about, the mm -hmm. herbs that are gonna help to you literally detoxify. Feel it fall yeah. Right down your, your throat and yeah. No, I feel so much better now than when I first walked in here. This place is a really happy place. Love what you've done by putting your own spin on wellness and introducing people to like ancient Asian culture mm -hmm. through food. Mm. My pleasure. My pleasure, <laughs> Danielle. If you're like me, there are going to be times when you want a little buzz to achieve your optimal wellness. That's why I'm friends with Albert Trummer, a master mixologist who designs cocktails the way top chefs craft their signature dishes. He's opened one destination bar after another. But today, he's going to make me some delicious elixirs using traditional Chinese ingredients with medicinal properties. Hi, Albert. Hi, Danielle. We have something special for you. It's Asian kumquat, Ooh. and we ferment it with some juices, Austrian elderflower, and also some herbs of the Chinese medicine. Oh, thanks. So, Danielle, we're going to show you some of the secrets of our medicinal bar. A good cocktail has three elements. The first element is the fruits. The second element is some herbs or dried herbs, what they use in Chinese medicine. And the third element, of course, it's the alcohol. So we're going to use alcohol and juices and combine this to a beautiful handcrafted cocktail. Well, you're known as sort of a, a doctor slash bartender. How is your approach to cocktails different? When I opened my first bar in Chinatown, I learned to use Chinese herbs, botanicals. Also, I learned uh, to use the, the same ingredients like chefs do in the kitchen. Uh, to create a culinary experience and to make a brilliant cocktail. So here is an overflow of all our ingredients what we're using today. I'd like to invite you behind the bar and then we're going to practice a little bit together to make a beautiful cocktail. Right, thanks for the lesson. The first process of making a cocktail, you need to create an elixir. So here we have like some dried figs. Okay. This, is, this, this looks like you're a chemist. It's like the chemist. <laughs> it's like the chemist container. So you put okay. two of those. You're a good student. Then you put like um, <laughs> three of the blackberries. Okay. We, we put two figs in there. I can't decide if you're a chef teaching me how to cook or if you're a doctor teaching me how to make medicine. So here's the next step. We take a few leaves of this beautiful artichoke and put it in there. Then we get a little bit of this juice of the of this guy, like this in here. Ah. Yeah. This is the the, the good part is we we using fresh juices. So the basic of my concept is really basic herbs, no sugar, and no artificial flavor. So we have the baby coconut. Then we get the star, star fruit. fruit. Yeah, it's very healthy. Squeeze that into. Huh. So so we finished with the juices and the and the fruits. So the next thing is the herbs. Uh, we have some mushrooms. Tried mushrooms, you find this in Chinatown all over. There's like, I think, thousands of mushrooms. We took two of the mushrooms. We're going to put mushroom and, and the elixir? Yep. Yes, that's what they do in Chinese medicine. But also important is um, the herbs, what we use in uh, sage. So we put mm. two sage leaves in there. And then not too much rosemary. How did you learn all of this? It's like I'm testing a lot with my colleagues. And if we feel good, then we release it to the customer. <laughs> so it's almost our own FDA proof improvement. So the next thing for the fermentation process, get a little bit of the bourbons. And then you can pour a little bit of the bourbon in there. And I say stop. That's fine. To make the cocktail and the, uh, the elixir perfect, we need to ferment that. So the fermenting process is going to be with, with the fire. I feel like I'm in science class yeah, or chemistry is. class. It starts fermenting little by little. It's like almost, it's like almost home cooking. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're doing Ooh, a really perfect it job. It smells amazing. Like you don't need to do it too long, but it really brings the herbs and botanicals, the secret essence out into the juice. So we finish the process and we do the last of the fermentation. If you can put the container on the on the thing. Right on there? The, be careful with the hands. Whew. And then we can put this slide in there. Oh! Here we go. This is this was very the final, magical. This was the final <laughs> fermentation. After our fermenting experience, we're going to taste 
the homemade elixir. Cheers, cheers to Time the... Time to drink our medicine? Yes, we drink the medicine. We call it, we call it, we call it Danielle number three. <laughs> Let's make this into a cocktail. I would put a little bit rosemary each, and then we have some sage. So the next step is gin. Uh, yeah, a little more. A little more. Yes. And then I like to put a little bit of lime juice. There's a special tonic. And then we fill this up with tonic. And steer gently. <laughs> you know, Albert, I think that there's a, just a general trend in the food world uh, towards wellness and functional foods. How is it crossing over into your world? Um, it goes years back when I opened uh, Apotec in Chinatown. Uh, I was so close to all these um, natural healing stores. Mm. I was so inspired by um, Chinatown and the Asian medicine to create beautiful things and beautiful cocktails with Chinese medicine. Love it. So you can drink your way towards enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. While setting a cocktail on fire might not be the easiest way to achieve wellness, it's certainly entertaining. As Asian ideas of wellness take their place in the American mainstream, I'm glad that I was able to go to the source to see where some of these trends came from and how they work on an everyday basis. Now, I know just how healthy an Asian diet can be. Funding for Lucky Chow has been provided by To learn more about Lucky Chow, visit LuckyRice.com.